right, guys. Welcome back to another exciting episode of the podcast. On today's show, we're going to have IFBB Figure Pro, NPC Judge, Tanya Andrea. So before we jump into this fantastic episode that you do not want to miss, we're going to hear a word from today's sponsor. Are you looking for clean energy without jitters and bad side effects? No sugar, artificial sweeteners, or preservatives? With a good source of energy from green tea and B12? Then look no further. Make sure you visit pureboost.com and check them out today. We use this every day. It's our drink of choice to give us that good pick-me-up in the morning. All right, welcome back to another fantastic episode of the podcast. Today, we have a very, very special guest joining us on the show. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi there. Um, my name is Tonya Andrea. Um, I am um, ISB Pro um, NPC um, judge, um, and I am happy to be here. Thank you for coming on the show and joining me today. Pardon me. So, can you tell me a little bit about yourself and how you became a uh, IFBB pro? Yeah, sure. And I will preface all of this by saying it really just fell into my lap. So, I didn't, I wasn't one of those people that, you know, had aspirations of bodybuilding from childhood. I really, really I will be candid about that. Um, so, it, it just kind of felt, you know, I've been an athlete. I, you know, ran track growing up. And so I come from a competitive background in my family as well. Um, so, but beyond that, but, but even, but even in that regard, it wasn't like I'm aspiring to lift weights. I mean, the, the weight lifting and, and agility stuff comes with, you know, playing sports and doing different activities, you know, as you're growing up. But there, even then, it wasn't like I'm really enjoying that part of it. So I want to lift weights. Um, so beyond college, um, that that wasn't really that wasn't at the forefront of of anything. You know, it was getting a job and doing all that all that stuff and really getting my feet wet um, with my career. So insert. So maybe about oh God, I would say you know, five. I had to be nine, nine or so years later, you know, I'd since had children and things like that. I started teaching Pilates, believe it or not. And I, and I really loved it. Um, I taught it, you know, I certified and got, and I taught that for about five years and I really loved the changes that I was seeing um, because I was, you know, I had a foundation, you know, from, from doing activities and playing sports, but it, it, I mean, obviously it wasn't like I am, I, I, my frame isn't like it was now, but I, I started with a little bit of a, of a, a good foundation, right? So taking and teaching Pilates, I was like, oh my gosh, I, I like, you know, how my body's responding and developing and things like that. So I was like, well, let me see if I can take this to another level. Cause the Pilates that I was teaching wasn't the, the, the slower paced, um, like mat Pilates. It was, um, more, um, uh, cardiovascular based, um, fast paced type of a workout. So it actually included a lot of the exercises that we're doing at the gym. So I was like, I like this. Um, and then, so I joined 24 hour fitness, um, started going in there and just started lifting, kind of doing some circuit things, getting comfortable with the weights. And then I started taking group fitness classes. Um, and there's an instructor, um, her name is Nicole and I credit her um, she probably doesn't even know it. Every time I talk about getting my start, um, she was my body pump instructor. And I'm like, she looks amazing. I'm like, how, 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 how can I look, you know, like that? Like, I love the way she looks. Looks fantastic. She's about my height. And so, um, you know, I was kind of talking to her about it. And then um, I found out that she competed. So um, around the gym, that it, it, at that time, it wasn't as trendy. Like right now, I feel like it's really trending, right? So at that time, that was probably like, I guess like 2013, 2014. It had to be 2013. Um, I was just kind of like asking around about it. And, you know, some some of um, the fellow people in the gym were like, well, I feel like you have a look for it. Um, why don't you, you know, give it a try? And I was like, okay. Like, you know, it's like, well, sure. You know, why not? And so like, exactly. That was my thoughts about it. Like, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? You know, it sounds fun because I had competed in some pageants before and they were like, it's like a, a beauty pageant, but like for people with muscles. And so, and so I said, I had that foundation, right? So 
there was some muscularity there, but not not like it. it it's it's kind of formed through training and weightlifting. Um, so I was like, okay. So I looked around. Um, a coach was recommended to me, um, and a really great one. He was he was great. And so I started working with um, my first coach in 2014 in January. Um, well, no, I started looking in January of 2014. And then I ended up working with one, finally committing and being like, okay, because, you know, it's a little bit of an expense. And even more so than the expense, it's a mental commitment, right? Discipline that, I mean, you can be like, I eat healthy. I eat, you know, whatever, fish, which I never did, really. But, you know, bodybuilding, it's a, it's a level of discipline that most can't really imagine. It's like, I, it's like you can't have the it's like the salad. Think about a salad. It's like, it's not like you can't have it because of the salad dressing. It's like you can't have it because of the amount of carbohydrates and the lettuce, right? So it's that type of discipline that I was like, let me make sure that I'm prepared for this because it is such a commitment and it's such an expense. So I started working with my coach in uh, June of 2014, did my first show in December of 2014, and I literally have never looked back. Um, it's been such a great um, experience for me. It's all of the all of the aspects of bodybuilding, whatever that is, I've implemented into my lifestyle wholeheartedly, and that's in my work, in 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 life with my kids. That's pretty much how I structure um, everything. Um, has kind of come from from bodybuilding and what I've learned um, through this entire journey in, in one form uh, or the other. So, um, like I said, it kind of just it fell into my lap in 2014. And, you know, here I am, I don't know, it's almost 10 years later, um, very much uh, still involved um, in the community, very much still involved um, with the competitors um, in, in all forms and still pretty much loving it um, just as much as I did um, in 2014, just with um, this being on the opposite side of things now versus the stage. So what would you say the transition was like into going from being a Pilates instructor to trying to build body mass? And what was what was the uh, the nutrition aspect of it like, too? Because I, I've heard from people, I mean, obviously, you know, two people are not alike, but yeah. that the diets and the workouts are all totally different. Totally different. Um, you know, people, I, I can't remember who I was talking to, but they were like, in terms of just the bodybuilding, we'll get to the food part. Like it's like uh, like you're like drawing a picture. Maybe it was some show I was watching, but they were like, think of it like a, a painter, right? But you're instead of painting, it's like you're utilizing this equipment to like create a piece of art. Like it's like such a science behind it. Like how to get um, this frame? Or to, it's like drawing your body to fit into a certain category. It's like learning how to do those things, and that's so different than me just going in um, to my Pilates class and, you know, doing a circuit, maybe I'm working my arms and my legs and my back and my shoulders all at the same time, which is wonderful, but transitioning into bodybuilding to where you're having to sculpt your body um, to a specific um, type of category or to look a certain way. Um, there's a science behind that, that I, had it not been for bodybuilding and entering this industry, I, I would have had no idea how all of that worked. And so it's really mesmerizing, you know, like, so a lot of, you know, people will come up to me and say, well, I do this every day, you know, I'll go in and I'll do my legs and the shoulders and my this and my that. Um, and I'm interested in competing. And it's like, you know, letting them know like, hey, it's gotta be, I mean, you really have to focus on the development of a, of a body. It's like one body part a day, right? So I couldn't go in and circuit and get the look that's desirable for a stage look for my division. That's plain and simple. Um, so that's one thing. And so that was very different in transitioning, like a, even a body pump class. Like I'm going in there to, you know, uh, maybe increase car cardiovascular activity. I'm going in there for heart health, those types of things. But that's not obviously not for, um, for, for training for a competition, right? So diet, that's on a completely different level, I would say. Um, the dieting is probably, because for me, for the most part, I enjoy weightlifting. I enjoy lifting heavy, which I didn't even realize I enjoyed lifting as lifting like that until I started. So that's something I will probably not ever stop doing. Um, but the diet, that's the, the weightlifting. I'm, I'm in and out an hour, an hour and 15 minutes for me. 
for me. That's as long as I'm in the gym. But your diet, so say when you're competing, is that's 24-7. So your schedule is pretty set with your diet from the time you wake up to the time you go to bed. You know exactly what you're eating. You know the, the, the portions of what you're eating. You know your macros. You know how, much, how many carbohydrates you're eating and fats if you get any and all the other stuff. Um, so that's the, that's the mentally challenging part. So in the whole time, you know, in your head, you're thinking, I need this hamburger. I need this peanut butter and jelly sandwich and, and things that you don't even eat. You're like, I need these things. And you're like, you don't need these things. Right. Um, it's just you in your head, you're like, I, I, I want them. Right. So food is just, is nourishment. That's, that's all it is. It just things that taste good to us. We, we want them. We like the taste of those things. So the, 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 the repetitiveness of eating the same thing every single day, um, that is the mental challenge that most people have. That and the portion size, right? Because most of the times I'm, we're eating until we're full. Like, I'm hungry. I'm going to eat the spaghetti um, until I'm no longer hungry. Versus, you know, when you're competing, um, you know, you've got to maintain a certain weight. You've got to maintain a certain um, level of body fat, Right. And eating until I'm full and eating whatever, we're not going to achieve that. And so that's where the discipline comes in. That repetitive eating, the same foods with the same amount of fats, with the same amount of carbohydrates, day in and day out is probably one of the most challenging things about uh, bodybuilding. And that was the biggest difference from, you know, working out of the gym because I'm, I'm still going home and eating I can eat whatever I want. I'm not going to say that I was doing that every day, but you could. You have the option to leave the gym and eat whatever you want versus now you don't have that option anymore if you're really serious about it. And if you're wanting to get on stage, um, if you're wanting, if your goal is to, you know, do a national show, if your goal is to, you know, achieve a pro card, then you've got to follow those protocols. And eating whatever you want is uh, definitely uh, not, not within that realm. Yeah, and I've, I've talked to a few bodybuilders and they all say the same thing that, it's not so much the working out or any of that, that, that is very taxing. It's the, the eating and how much you have to eat. And even when you're not hungry, you still have to eat to, to be able to maintain the fuel to build the body that you're looking and that to what you said, keep the weight. Right. Right. And it depends, you know, on, on what division you're doing as well. Cause some people aren't eating as much. Um, some people like a bodybuilder, right. Or a 212 guy or a classic physique guy, they're eating, I would say, probably about five, six, seven times as much as I am. So whereas I could be like, okay, this six ounces of chicken and four ounces of sweet potatoes and, I don't know, four stems of asparagus is definitely not enough. Like, I, I feel like oh, your metabolism is on fire, that type of thing. So, yeah, depending upon your goals and um, what type of body, where you're coming from um, and where you're trying to go, um, that'll absolutely... Um, that would, you know, kind of tailor your meals um, to what, to, to that, to what you're trying to achieve. So what was the journey like to get your pro card? Because I, I, I hear it's not the easiest thing to do. It's not, it's not. And, you know, it's, it's, and, and getting the pro card and a lot of people think it's like, um, well, I'm really muscular. So I'm gonna, I, and, and, and I heard that from my friend and I heard that from my coach. So I'm, I'm going to go do this show and I'm going to go try and get my pro card. And so winning shows, um, it depends on several different things. I mean, it could be like j just straight, just genetics, like how you came out of your parents. Cause the, you know, when you're looking at people it could be like shape what they're looking at. You've probably heard like, Oh, they're looking for maybe men and women. Maybe they're, look they're looking for broader shoulders. They're looking for a smaller waist. They're looking for maybe bigger, bigger legs or bigger quads or something like that. So just how a person is shaped um, can really be helpful to them in that regard. And that has nothing to do with how much they're lifting in the gym. I mean, yes, you want to look muscular, but that's something that could be very helpful. Um, so, so your starting point can be helpful um, as well, but it could be a long one or it could be a short one. You know, I have, um, you know, friends that have been, you know, in this industry for, 15 years, you know, still trying to obtain that. And then, you know, you have very rarely, um, but you will have someone who will do two shows, you know, and they've got it. So it could be like a long tumultuous road or it could be quick and painless. You know, it, it depends on a number of factors. It really does. 
Um, it could depend on how many people you have competing against you, plain and simple. If I got four, my chances of that um, is, are going to be higher of getting a card um, versus if I have 44, right? So th there's, there's lots of differences um, that, you know, that, 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 that lots of things that come into consideration when trying to get, you know, a, a, a pro card. So, but it's, I mean, it's fun. Um, I will talk about my experience. It was very fun. I did. So my first show was in 2014. Um, and, and I was uh, tell people the story and I'd laugh because my coach was like, don't worry about it. It's going to be, don't worry about the show. It's going to be very small. Um, it's not a national qualifier, so you're going to be good. And that show was huge. It was not a national qualifier, but it was a really big show. And I, oh my God, it scared me half to death. But I think that that was one of the reasons that I, I liked it so much because I did relatively well. And I was just like, okay, well, let me just see. Let's, let's do another one and just kind of check it out and, and see where this goes. And then kind of the same thing. And so I did two more before, um, <laughs> my coach was like, okay, let's, let's, See what let's see where we can go with this thing if that's your goal um which it, it did turn into my goal I, I loved it so much i met so many friends so many guys so many girls that are still very very good friends today that made the journey just a little bit easier or actually a lot bit easier because i was able to compete with my best friend and so to uh let's see so that was december in 2014 so coming around that's one year in 2016 in june so we ended up going to we're like we're going to put all our eggs in this one basket and we are going to go to uh, USA's um, in Vegas. Um, it's in July. July, I remember the date, 28th through the 30th or something like that. And um, it was it was really nerve wracking um, and it was really stressful because that's all that's on your brain. You can't, if you're, if you're really trying to get a pro card, you can't, you're not thinking about anything else. And it's really, um, especially when you have like a spouse, you have children, you've got things like that, that require your time. And you've got other commitments that require your time because I will be candid. If you know, say your child has a school play, you're physically there, but mentally you are absolutely not there because the only thing you're thinking about is, oh my gosh, it's three o'clock. My next meal is at four. I didn't bring it with me. Oh my gosh, I didn't get to do my cardio in the morning. So now I've got to do it after my kid's game. So it's that's where the, the mental part comes in. So physically you're present in places, but mentally you're, you're thinking about something related to bodybuilding, right? Or your training or your diet or something like that. So it was, um, it was stressful. I will say, um, you know, anyone who says that it's easy, it's, that's, it's not, um, it's, it's really not, um, especially if you, if this is your goal, um, this is something that you really want, um, then it's, it's definitely something that's going to mess with your mind a little bit, but I will say that it's all worth it. Cause again, it, it, this is something that's been part of my life for, you know, almost, almost 10 years. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't change it for anything. Um, that pro card was, it was in Vegas and there was a lot of people there. There was, you know, it was 40 girls, you know, in the class and to get your pro card, um, at, at that show, um, which is still a very prestigious show, um, was one of the greatest times, um, you know, in, in life, in life, I can, I can say that. Um, with certainty, because just because that that was a goal, I'm like that, this is my goal, and I'm going to hit it, and I'm going to achieve it, right? So the the road is like I said, it could be it it can be tumultuous tumultuous in the mental capacity more than the physical, because again, working out is working out, but everything else um, that comes with it is what your what your mind is 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 more wrapped around. So what is it like to not only go from, well, to, to become a pro and then to transition to where you're judging the competitions? Yeah. So sure. So <laughs> I started out um, expediting um, with uh, NPC in Texas. So I'm, I'm in Texas, um, which I loved. Um, it was great. I just love like being around, like the energy, like the Olympia just happened. Or I, Obviously, I'm not an expert out there, but the energy at that or these bodybuilding competitions to me is like unmatched. Like everybody is it, it's so positive. It just screams health, right? Everybody's so motivating. Like I just put something in my stories and where um, I, I was answering questions and they were like, well, what keeps you motivated? And I was like, well, it's not people. So I, 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 I avoid attaching my motivation to like people. Like I attach it to my feelings, how I feel things, what people are doing, the energy, 
And that is what I get from bot like competitions, bodybuilding competitions or events or anything um, like that. So that's why I started expediting. So expediters are the people, you know, they're backstage, they, um, they're helping the competitors, um, you know, figure out where they're supposed to be. They're on stage, they're guiding them. They're making sure they're not lost. They're making sure they're not confused. They're making sure that the show is running smoothly and um, that they, they know where they're supposed to be and, and ha have all the information that they need to be successful that day. Um, so I did that for a couple of years and it was wonderful. Like just, I remember that feeling, like that feeling of just newness, whether I, you know, it was my first show or my second show, um, just all the jitters and all the anxiousness. That doesn't sound great, but I just remember that feeling and it's, it's just a rush. Um, and so any way I can help them back there, um, I was happy to do so. Um, so beyond that, I was like, well, I really wanted to get into, I really want to get into judging. Like I, uh, candidly, I will say, um, I, uh, received some feedback on, on my end for myself, um, that it really didn't have much to do with my, um, physique. Um, and that's why we're there, right. For, to be judged on our physiques. And so I was very disappointed in that feedback that I had received, extremely disappointed so much so that I was like, Oh, well, I don't want to compete anymore. And I remember that feeling. And so I was like, well, I want to make sure that the competitors know Ex the reasons, the real reasons why they're receiving the placings that they're getting. And I want to make sure that I'm the one telling them that, hey, this is this is what we need to fix. And this is how we can get better versus something that may or may not make make sense or something like that. So I just wanted to make sure that I was I wanted to be that person that was genuine in my answers and being clear to competitors like this is what we're looking for. Right. And saying it in a very tactful way, because I know that once you step off that stage, your feelings are all over the place. You, you might be happy. You might be upset. You might be sad. And the last thing you want to do, we, we, you know, you want to hear is something that's really disappointing um, and maybe not necessarily what you were looking for. And I don't mean in terms of like, you're not conditions. Right. So I just wanted to make sure that I, I, I didn't, you know, I, I don't want to make anybody feel that way. So it was my goal. I was like, I want to get in there and just make sure that the competitor knows like they congratulate them for getting up there. And that's a hard, that's a hard feat, right? To, regardless of what you look like getting up there in front of hundreds of people wearing next to nothing, like who, that's kind of like, who, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's hard enough as it is. So, um, you know, they're, they're, they're asking us for honest feedback. If this is their goal, if this is something they want to reach, I always want to make sure that I'm doing my best to provide them with the most honest, tactful feedback as possible. Um, and I feel like I've done a pretty good job of doing that. And so with that said, being on the opposite side of the stage, literally from behind the stage in front, um, I have enjoyed it um, so much. And as long as I'm able to do it, I will. Um, I will. Um, the judging Texas uh, judging staff panel, um, they are amazing. They do an amazing job at collaborating. Um, we work together. So, you know, it's not just one person like this, that, this, that. Um, and, and that's why I love it, too. They ask, you know, they're getting everybody's opinions. And it's just a fun team. They're really, they're a really fun bunch um, you know, we talk not just at the table where, you know, we talk outside of that. It's like just like a big old family, literally, you know, when people say that, you're like, eh, not really, but it is. Cause I've been, I've been with these, this group, like I said, it's been, you know, I've known them, you know, almost 10 years. So it's, it's been a great, a great journey and transition for sure. So what do you think is next for you in, in, in the next step of your career after oh. you get done with the, the bodybuilding and the judging aspect? Do you know what? That is such a good question. Um, I feel like I'm just like in not limbo phase, but I'm just kind of like to myself, I'm like, yeah, what is next? I don't know. You know, there's, but there's levels, right? So I'm at the NPC level. Um, there's levels where you can judge, um, you know, on the IFBB level. And so I'm like, maybe that's something that I'll look into as well. But I'm always looking trying to think of like ways of, you know, what, what, what can I do different in the industry and how can I do that? Um, and so that's definitely something I've been thinking about, but, as, but in terms of like concrete steps, what, what, what is that? And what does that look like? That is a good question. I'm like, you know, maybe some opportunities will come, but um, as far as, yeah, what I, you know, anything that I've mapped out, um, that's actually a good question. I probably need to be thinking <laughs> about that, <laughs> um, which I haven't. Um, because I'm on the competing side, I think that's probably done. Um, so, yeah, um, I, 
that is definitely something that I'm that I'm going to have to think long and and, mm-hmm. and hard about. But right now, uh, I am mm-hmm. I, I it is it is fun um, what I'm doing now. Um, but definitely want to want to pursue um, some different things. Um, yeah, just kind of kind of take some time and map that out and see what that looks like. Mm-hmm. There you go. Well, I, I believe I found you on Instagram. Um, where, where can our uh, listeners and viewers find you on social media? Sure. Um, you can find me at Tonya underscore underscore Andrea. So most people think it's probably like underscore. It's, it's two underscores because believe it or not, Tonya underscore Andrea was taken. So T-O-N-Y-A, two underscores, Andrea, A-N-D-R-E-A. Very cool. I appreciate you taking time out of your schedule to chat with me. It's been a real honor and privilege. It was a blast. It was a blast. Thank you so much for having me on.